Hey, Richard Knutson here again. And in this video, I want to show you how to get the most out of charts. Definitely on my top 10 new features list for Dynamics CRM 2011. Now, one of the things that makes the implementation of charts so useful is how nicely they're integrated with the data grids and views you work with. A fancy term for this is inline visualization. And once you understand how to use it, you start to really appreciate its advantages, not just in improving your ability to visualize the most important information often hidden away in rows and columns of data, but also in how to more easily perform many of the tasks you do every day in CRM, such as assigning records, sending emails, creating marketing lists, and the like. So let's start with the basics. How do you access charts from Dynamic CRM 2011 data grids? A good place to start is on the Accounts Data Grid, which you see here in my Sample AdventureWorks database. Now, by default, the chart pane is located here to the right of the grid. And if I click here or anywhere along this little strip, I can expand it like this. At the top of the chart pane, you can select from any of the available charts. The accounts record type comes pre-configured with these four charts and you can customize them, create new ones, and so forth. I'll talk more about customizing charts in a little bit. Now let's look at another interesting use of charts by navigating to the opportunities record type here in my sample database. And here, if I select the one opportunities view for opportunities, and then I expand the chart pane. You can see that Opportunities comes pre-configured with a lot of charts. Now, a couple of these are designed specifically to be used with the one Opportunities view I'm looking at here, such as this actual revenue by month view. Now, for a time series chart like this one, where we've got a lot of data points along the horizontal axis, I can improve the visualization of the data by clicking on the Charts tab, clicking the Chart Pane drop-down list, and moving that chart display, chart pane, to the top. I can collapse this chart pane by clicking here, and then expand it again, like so. Okay, now, I want to dive a little bit deeper into how charts and views work together on a data grid. And to illustrate this, I'll navigate back to accounts I've done here. And the basic rules are these. Number one, to compare alternative visualizations of the same underlying data set, keep the view constant and select different charts. So for example, I've got the My Active Accounts view selected here. And in the chart pane, I can cycle through different charts to see how my accounts are distributed across these different categories, such as industry or territories. And by definition, seeing how my accounts are distributed across owner is uh, uninteresting. Okay, so basic rule number two to compare how different data sets are distributed across the same categories, keep the chart constant and select different views. So once again, I'll select this accounts by industry chart, and I can compare the distribution of my accounts across industries to that of how all accounts, active accounts view, how all accounts are distributed across industries. Then I can select a different chart, say accounts by territories, and I can compare the distribution of all active accounts across territories with the distribution of just my active accounts across territories. And I can see if I want to travel less, maybe I'll assign myself some uh, accounts in the central region here. Okay, now that we've seen the basics, let's drill down a little and in particular on the drill down feature, which is supported by most charts and really starts to show how much inline visualization not only improves your ability to visualize complex data sets, but also makes for more productive user experience and makes many common tasks considerably easy, easier to perform. 
So to understand drill down, it helps to understand another new feature, which is the ability to filter the data on a grid. For example, if I'm on the accounts grid, as you see here, and I click the filter button in the data group, you can see that the grid gets Excel-like. The column headers get clickable, and depending upon the column's data types, I can apply a filter, for example, like this one here. I'll choose the city field, drop that down, I'll do a custom filter, and take a look at the accounts who are in cities that begin with, say, R. Clicking the filter button again clears the filter. And this is an important feature on its own since it lets you filter the data on a grid without having to resort to advanced finds so often, among other things. So anyway, what does this have to do with charts and drill down? Well, it turns out that drill down is really just a visual way of filtering data. So for example, with the active accounts view selected, which you see here, I can expand the chart pane and as I hover the mouse over one of the data bars in the Accounts Spy Industry chart, for example, you can see it's clickable. And if I click one of the bars, you can see what I refer to as a one-click drill down. I've just filtered the active accounts view to only show me accounts in a specific industry, which is kind of cool because notice this view doesn't even include the industry column. So not only does this let me more easily filter views, but it also lets me filter on any field I've got a chart for, regardless of whether it's in the view or not. If I click anywhere outside the chart area there, the filter is cleared. And if I click on another bar, I'll apply a filter for that selected value. Now, I'll clear the filter again and switch to the Accounts by Territories chart to see how we can use this to get some real work done. If I drill down on the Central Territory, I'll go a little bit further than I did last time by using this control here to select a field to distribute this filter view across. I'll select the Owner field in this case, and I'll click this little right arrow, the OK button here, and you can see what this does is makes it visually obvious that my accounts are certainly not assigned on the basis of which territory the, uh, the owner is assigned to. So I can fix this, if I want to, by selecting all of the accounts in the view and using the Assign button on the ribbon to assign them to one of these reps. Suppose Allen is my new central region or central territory rep. So that's a good example of how inline visualizations make everyday tasks easier. And there are innumerable examples of these. Sending emails, creating marketing lists. As long as I can perform an action against selected records on a grid, such as these things in the, the uh, collaborate group up here, send direct email, add to marketing list. That's a good candidate for something that might be done more easily with inline visualization. Now let's look at another interesting example of how you can use drill down. This time I'll do it on opportunities. So after I navigate to opportunities, notice I've got the one opportunities view selected here. I can expand the chart pane and I'll select the actual revenue by month chart again. This is a chart that's specifically designed to be used with this one opportunities view. So I can select that if necessary. Again, this is probably an example of where I might want to move that up to the top. So I click the charts ribbon, chart pane drop down, select top. Now I can use one click drill down to quickly review the details of our sales history. By clicking the data point for each month and noticing that the view automatically refreshes to show me just the opportunities that were closed as one in each of the months that I have historical sales in my data set for. Okay, now we've seen how to work with charts and views on grids and how useful drill down can be.
But now let's take a look at how to create custom charts. A good example of where you might want to do this has to do with activities, what we're looking at here. There are several out-of-the-box charts available for the generic activities record type. You can see some of them here. As a matter of fact, you can see all of them here. But there aren't any for the specific activity types, like phone calls or appointments. You can see that if I navigate to, say, appointments, look at all appointments. You can see there aren't any out-of-the-box charts defined for any of the specific activity types. So what I'll do now is to create a personal chart to display appointments by a week. By default, all users can create personal charts, but when you create one of these, you are the only user who can see it. So, starting from this view of appointments, I can create a personal chart like this. Go to the Charts tab, click New Chart, what happens is the chart designer opens where the chart pane would normally be. Just enter the name of the chart in the chart designer. And then, in this section here, I'll select Subject, and then accept the default Count All function in the second column there. Then I'll choose Start Time, and I'll group this by week in the second column there mocks it up for me as I'm going here. Now I can click Save and Close, leave the Chart Designer, and the Chart Pane will refresh with that chart displayed there. So now, what if I like this chart so much I want to expose it to everybody in my organization and not have it be a personal chart? I want to turn this into a system chart. Well, there are two ways I could do this. I could click Customize, customize the entity. This is the appointment entity since I've selected that one in the view. Click on Charts. If I click New here, I'll be creating a new system chart. I am a system administrator, so I can do this. But there's a better way to do this. I can take advantage of the ability to export a chart. So with my Appointments by Week chart selected, if I click, click Export Chart, It'll give me the ability to save the XML definition file for this chart on disk. And let's just uh, save it to the desktop. Then, rather than recreate the thing from scratch, I can go into Customize, Customize the Entity, go into Charts, and import it. I do that with the More Actions menu. Here's another way you can see that there's no charts defined for an entity such as Appointment. There's no charts here. So rather than start from scratch, click New, I'm going to do More Actions, Import Chart, browse out to, in this case, the desktop where I dropped it. Go to my Appointments by Week. Bring that in. And now all I have to do is publish those customizations, select the appointment entity, and when that refreshes, I'll just click Publish. And when it's done publishing, close out of there. Now I can refresh. Now if I expand the chart pane, I've got my personal chart appointments by week, but there's my new system chart appointments by week. And since I've now got this, I don't need this one anymore, so I select that personal view, go to charts, uh, select that personal view, go to charts, and delete it. And now I've got that nice system chart that I did not have to create from scratch. So there's an example of where you might want to create a custom chart. 